What's up everybody, it's Seth from Fowler Customs and today I'm reviewing the brand new Adidas Alexander Wang Run. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, but with all that being said, let's get into it. So Alexander Wang and Adidas have been doing collaborations for the last couple months now. They've come out with a couple different boost silhouettes, a couple different skate silhouettes, and a lot of apparel. And to be totally honest with you guys, I haven't loved everything that's come out. It's kind of been more hit and miss for me, so I've been careful about what to pick up and what not to pick up. But last week, a couple more colorways of the Alexander Wang runs dropped, and I figured now would be as good a time as any to grab them. One thing I've got to say before we get into the review itself, I really dig Alexander Wang and Adidas' packaging on this shoe. I think it's A+, and for that reason, before we get into the review, let's take a look at the box. So the outside of the box is kind of unassuming. It's a small, just matte white Adidas box. You've got the Adidas trifoil embossed on the top, the Adidas logo and the Alexander Wang logo on the back, and other than the size tag on the front, that's pretty much it. But where the packaging actually gets really cool is when you actually open up the box. So on the top of the lid, you've got this glossy blue with the white Adidas logos repeated. Same sort of situation underneath the dust bag. You've got the three stripes, and then actually what looks like some sizing information, I think? Sizing information, that's what it is. It actually looks like they took one of those blue Adidas boxes and flipped it inside out. It's definitely a cool look and I like that there's a pop of color inside the box. But getting into my favorite part of the packaging, this sort of plasticky, papery dust bag. It feels like it's almost made out of that recycled plastic. It's a really interesting sort of texture. You've also got these super thick drawstrings, which are kind of cool. But getting into the main event, here they are, the Adidas Alexander Wang Runs. These look super flat when they're not on feet. I've gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of them when they're not stuffed or have a foot in them. So the Alexander Wang Run is sort of a new silhouette for Adidas. It's not an Ultra Boost, it's not really an NMD. They've only ever really used the silhouette for the previous Alexander Wang collaborations. And all I've gotta say is that it's different. Moving into the upper, you've got this one-piece construction made up of this elastic mesh material. The mesh is kind of rough to the touch, which I don't love, but inside the shoe, there's actually this inner lining, so you don't actually feel this part with your foot. I don't think it's prime knit, but it's actually kind of similar to what you find in the Human Race NMDs, except it's not really a knit, it's just more of a mesh, so the holes are actually a little bit wider than they are in the NMDs. However, it is still very elastic and pretty flexible, so it's pretty comfortable when you're wearing it on feet. Moving back on the shoe, you've got this leather area here, which is the same color as the rest of the mesh. All this leather area is here for, besides aesthetic obviously, is to hold the laces. Something I don't like about this leather piece here is that it feels really fragile because it's only connected to the mesh through stitching on the toe and then stitching around the ankle. It's also sewn to this elastic area here that comes up from the boost midsole because this leather area is really just stitched to mesh, so I feel like this could break really easily. Moral of the story is, I'd just be a little careful when I wear these shoes. Of course, you've got your laces woven through these leather eyelets and they actually continue around to the back of the shoe. These aren't your standard laces, in fact, they're actually more of like a bungee cord material. One thing I've got to say is that although the laces provide some pretty good lockdown, because they're elastic, they're actually really hard to loosen so you can actually get your foot in the shoe. However, as I mentioned, once you get your foot into the shoe, they do provide some really nice lockdown, especially if you tighten this lace lock area here in the back. Underneath the laces, you've got this thin textured foam pad in black with the Adidas logo printed on the top. It's kind of a weird element on the shoe and I'm assuming it's mostly aesthetic. But one thing I actually really liked about this when I was wearing the shoe is that it actually seems to disperse the tension from these bungee laces. So when you really tighten down on the shoe, it doesn't feel like you're getting any pinch points, at least not around the midfoot. The downside though is that where you'd usually have a split between these two leather areas, now there's a stiff edge. So if you lean forward too far when you're walking, you do sometimes find that this edge can dig into your foot. Not a huge deal and it probably doesn't affect everyone, but it kind of bothered me a little bit. Continue Continuing back on the shoe, you've got the part that everyone loves to hate, the sock light collar. This is not the first time Adidas has used this collar on one of their silhouettes, and I've gotta be honest, I really don't love it, and I haven't liked it in the past either. It just really seems like a weird way to make a shoe a high top, and I find it even weirder if I'm wearing higher socks with this shoe, because this area does get really warm. I don't know, I really don't love the look of this collar, however, I do think this is the best implementation of this collar on an Adidas model. And to be fair, it does hug your ankle pretty nicely, so I'm not mad at it for that. It's just weird looking. I uh, I don't love it. Inside the shoe, you've got blue and white print with Alexander Wang's logo and Adidas's logo. It's actually the same exact print that you find on the dust bag. One thing I like about that area is that it's actually a separate insole, so unlike the NMDs, you're not walking on just pure boost. 
you've actually got a little bit of cushion in between your foot and the boost. It's not a huge deal, but it does make the shoe ever so slightly more comfortable. Since we're talking about the insole of the shoe, we might as well talk about fit. My true size is a size 9, but with Adidas, you never really can tell if the shoe is going to fit you big or fit you small. It's really a toss up with them. It's kind of weird. This shoe I had to get a half size down, and that's not because of the fit. That's just literally all they had in stock at the time. And what I will say is that a half size down doesn't fit too bad. It's definitely a little snug, but it's not unbearable. I would have preferred my true size, one, because it might have fit a little bit looser, and two, because it would have been easier to get my foot into. So if you have a more narrow foot like me, I don't think it hurts to go down half a size. Personally, I'd probably recommend true to size, unless you're a wide footer. If you're a wide footer, your foot will spill out over the size of the shoe, and I would definitely recommend going up a half size. But as always, if you have the opportunity to try the shoe on first, I would definitely do that just to make sure it's the right fit for you. Moving around to the back of the shoe, you've got the laces continuing from this nylon loop all the way up through this leather heel counter. This heel counter doesn't provide anything in the way of lockdown, it's purely aesthetic. And one thing that kind of bothers me is that it's only stitched in this little triangle right here. So if you pull too hard, or if you pull the laces too hard even, it might come off. That's one thing that I really don't love about this shoe. The entire shoe feels really fragile. So when I was putting the shoe on for the first time, because it's got this sock-like upper, it was really tough to get on. And every time I pulled something or tried to stretch something, I was really worried I was gonna break something. I don't think it actually is as fragile as it seems, but it is a designer shoe. And like I said, there are some areas that feel really flimsy. So just be careful when you're wearing it, especially if you're dropping $220 for it, or even worse, resale. Moving down the shoe, you've got this thin black piping dividing the upper of the shoe from the boost midsole. It's an interesting touch, and I don't think Adidas has ever done anything like this. And to be honest, I actually don't mind the way it looks. The boost midsole itself is slightly different from the Ultra Boost and from the NMD. I would say comfort-wise, it's probably closer to the Ultra Boost than the NMD. I mean, if you've worn either the NMD or the Ultra Boost before, the difference between this guy and those guys is pretty negligible. Finally, moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this gum outsole with this triangular traction pattern. It's pretty similar to the NMD outsole, except slightly thicker. And then finally rounding off the shoe, you've got the Adidas logo and the Alexander Wang logo. Overall, this is definitely an interesting shoe, and I like that Adidas is collaborating with big designer brands like Alexander Wang. Out of the two colorways of this silhouette that dropped recently, I think the black, gray, and red is my favorite. The white and blue is not too bad, but I just feel like it's going to get dirty so fast. Personally for me, I don't feel like this is a shoe I'm going to rock that often. I feel like there's a little bit too much going on, and like I said, I really don't love this sock-like collar. You kind of have to be wearing the right outfit to complement this shoe. It's not like an Air Jordan 1 or an Ultra Boost that you can throw on with anything. You definitely have to kind of coordinate what you're wearing. If you're trying to grab one of these for yourself, you may still be able to find one for retail because even though they initially sold out, there was a couple restocks, and those restocks seem to be sitting. If you can't find them for retail, resale isn't that bad, so if you really want them, you shouldn't have too hard of a time finding them. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's throw these guys on feet and see how they look. That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Alexander Wang run and if you'd like to see more of these in the future. Also, on a side note, I'm doing a lot more Instagram Lives and it's a lot of fun to get to talk to you guys and interact with you guys in real time. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Fowler Customs. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Fowler Customs if you want to see more content just like this, and follow Fowler Customs on Snups, Instagram, and on Twitter.